DPW Director Donna Lascalia. Here. Police Chief John Cartledge. Here. Planning and Sustainability Director Carolyn Mish. Here. Nancy's still not here, right? Not here. Um, Ward 5 Councilor Alex Jarrett. Here. Um, Councilor Deb Pastrich Clemmer. Uh, uh, here. Citizen Adam Novit. Here. Citizen Devin Bruce. Here. Diana is not here still. Nope. Um, and citizen Jamie Albro Fisher. Here. So you've got eight at the moment. Okay, thanks very much. Cindy, let me know if uh if the others arrive, please. All right, this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Um, like to ask if anyone here has any public comment for us, uh, opportunity to address the commission. I will ask if you are here to speak on a particular agenda item, if you can hold your comments until that time um, where we'll recognize you um, and allow you to speak. It just makes for a more orderly meeting. Um, but if you're here to speak to us about something not on the agenda, now is your opportunity. Just ask that you state your name and city of town of residence for the record and that you limit your comments to two minutes. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak to us for a non-agenda item for public comment? Please raise your virtual hand. Or you can even raise your hand on the screen. I might be able to see you. Uh, I do not see anyone. Okay, next up, we'll move to approve the minutes from a prior meeting, December 19th, 2023. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? Move to approve. Seven seconds. Is there any discussion on the minutes of December 19th, 2023? Okay, seeing and hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Donna? Yes. John? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Alex? Yes. Deb? Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I should be clearer. Um, Adam? Yes. Deb in? Yes. And Jamie? Yes. And no Diana, no Nancy still, right? Okay. So that passes unanimously with eight yeses. All right. Thank you, Beth. Next up is reports from departments and subcommittees. Um, just have a couple of updates from DPW. I-91 bridges over Route 5, the railroad, and Hockenham Road. Um, there are lane and shoulder closures for site access and concrete work. Those are ongoing. That project is being managed by Mass DOT District 2. Um, also like to announce that uh, Fuss and O'Neill um, is working with the city and Smith College uh, for plans to install rectangular rapid flashing beacons and other improvements at several intersections on West Street and at Elm Street. Uh, we've talked a little bit about that um, at this commission and their work will be ongoing uh, over the winter months, uh, ultimately for spring uh, construction. So those are updates from DPW. Any other members of the commission have any updates for us? Carolyn, go ahead. Um, thanks, Donna. Just a couple. One is um, this long lasting project that started in 2015 for the Rocky Hill shared use path that will connect uh, the Northampton New Haven Trail to Rocky Hill Road is moving still at a snail's pace, but we're moving into sort of the last stretch here. So on council's agenda Thursday, um, there'll be a couple of um, orders of taking for just temporary construction purposes on, along Rocky Hill Road. Um, the plan um, will continue to move forward with those right of way um, 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 takings and acquisitions uh, process as part of MassDOT and then 
probably um, going out to bid by the end of the calendar year. Um, so we are hopeful that this is the, really the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, the other thing is we had a meeting, we had asked um, this relates to the downtown parking study that was conducted by um, Stantec. Um, and originally they stand up and made recommendations about modifying the parking management and, um, and locations and also fee structure um, in downtown. And they've come back and done an analysis over the first six months of that implementation. And so we're going to get a formal report for them pretty soon, but it does look like it's had the intended um, results in that people, there's more turnover on Main Street, people are using the side street um, parking spaces as well as the lots and um, parking has increased in the parking garage. Um, so that's um, all good information and good signs pointing towards um, sort of a positive outcome from that um, change in parking structure. And that's it, thanks. Thanks, Carolyn. Any other updates for the commission? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we'll move to matters before the commission. First up is a proposed ordinance relative to a stop sign on Redford Drive. So just briefly before we um, dive into these ordinances, um, we had our, our traffic engineers, Boston O'Neill, study several intersections in the city for us and make recommendations to the agenda that you, the agenda items you see before you today um, came out of uh, Fuss and O'Neill's work that has been ongoing for several months. So um, what I will do is I will read the ordinance into the record. I will explain. Um, and then um, if there are folks here from the public who have comments, um, we'll take your comments at that time. So this is an ordinance relative to a stop sign on Redford Drive, an ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, due to a deed by the city council of the city of Northampton and city council assembled as follows. Section one, that's section 312-113 of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. As follows, section 312-113, schedule 12, stop and yield intersections, A, isolated stop sign. Stop intersections are established at the following locations, multiple revisions, um, all the dates I will not read. Location, Redford Drive, direction of travel south at the intersection of Birch Pit Road. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? Move positive recommendation. I'll second it. Thanks, Adam. So Fuston O'Neill studied the intersection of Birch Pit Road at Redford Drive and Cardinal Way. Redford Drive is the north leg and Cardinal Way is the south leg of the intersection. Birch Pit Road travels in the westbound and eastbound direction. There is an existing stop sign on Cardinal Way. Um, Maggie, if you wouldn't mind, it might be helpful to pull up a street view of this. Perfect, thank you. So we can take a closer look. Um, so I, as I mentioned, we had our um, traffic engineers, Fuss and O'Neill, take a look at this and several other intersections um, throughout the city. Um, they studied uh, turning movements, crashes, sight lines, and um, I will just note there was one crash reported here um, between uh, January 1st, 2020 and December 31st, 2022. It is their recommendation to add a stop sign and a stop bar on Redford Drive. And um, they note that visibility is restricted by um, vegetation, including some large trees, also a, a utility pole. Um, so, you know, it'll just kind of clean this intersection up and um, communicate clearly to drivers um, what is expected. So um, that is the ordinance as written. Um, I'll first ask if there is anyone here from the public who would like to speak to us about this particular agenda item. Welcome to raise your virtual hand. Okay, I don't see anyone from the public. Anyone from the commission have any comments or questions about this ordinance? Councillor Jarek, go ahead. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I, 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 Yes, maybe I need to go back to driver's ed, but I'm a little confused. It wouldn't 
this just be the in a four way intersection, you'd always want two of them to have a stop sign. Um, and I know we're, it's great that we're correcting that, but are, are there circumstances where you would not have a stop sign in a, in a four, you know, where you have a crossing intersection, at least on two? Yeah, it's 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 actually common throughout the city council where we have locations um, where there just isn't a stop sign. It, it's just not in the code of ordinances. Um, and there are definitely many locations like that throughout the city. I believe we corrected one at um, uh, Cross Street and Bliss Street um, a few years back um, where there are sightline obstructions. Um, you know, this is an example of of a place where there's definitely uh, sightline uh, obstructions, and we want to just make it very clear that people should be stopping. Chief, would you mind just commenting, um, kind of in general, what is expected of drivers? Um, you know, when they get to a non-controlled intersection. Sure. Um, basically. If there is no stop sign at an uh, intersection such as this, the driver uh, must approach the intersecting road slowly and cautiously enough where they can see the other lanes of traffic and then proceed after that, um, just essentially yielding to any oncoming traffic at a slow rate just to be safe. Um, obviously, if there is a stop sign, they just need to stop first and then pull out cautiously as well, but with no stop sign, they have to approach where they can see the other lanes of traffic before they pull out um, whatever direction they'll be heading to. Thanks, Chief. And Councilor, yeah. what, you know, again, this is not uncommon. Um, and, and we actually, you know, take a lot of comments from residents throughout the city on something like this where we have really low volumes or no sightline issues we tend to try to avoid visual clutter and putting up ne unnecessary signage when it's sort of a common sense issue but when it's a little more heavily trafficked or the through speeds are higher um, we tend to like to try to take that guesswork out of the equation thank you any other comments from Anyone on the commission on this? Okay, seeing and hearing none, last call for any public comments on this ordinance. Okay, we have a motion on the floor for a positive recommendation for this. Beth, if you could please call the roll. Um, I just want to confirm that uh, Joyce is clapping and not raising a hand. Um, Joyce, if you are raising your hand, please do that again. Otherwise, I, I just want to make sure I'm not missing a comment here. Okay, I think that was cheering. Um, okay, Beth, if you could please call the roll. Donna? Yes. John? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. I believe I see Nancy. Are you there? Nancy? Oh, yeah. Let me, um, good catch. Hold on a second. I need to uh, mute her. Hold on just a moment. Okay. Yes. Alex. Yes. Deb. Yes. Adam. Yes. Devin? Yes. And Jamie? Yes. Diana is still not here, correct? Correct. Okay. So that's um, unanimously approved with nine votes. Thank you, Beth. Okay, next up is a proposed ordinance relative to multi way stop signs. This is an ordinance relative to multi-way stop signs on Prospect Street at Crescent Street and Summer Street, Hinkley Street at Warner Street and Riverside Drive at Federal Street. An ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and City Council assembled as follows. Section 1, Section 312-113 of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows. 
Section 312-113, Schedule 12, Stop and Yield Intersections. A, isolated stop signs. Stop intersections are established at the following locations, and there is a strike through at multiple locations. D, multi-way stop signs. Multi-way stop intersections are established at the following locations. Location, Crescent Street, direction of travel east, intersection, Prospect Street slash Summer Street. Location, Federal Street, direction of travel north slash south. Intersection Riverside Drive, location Hinkley Street, direction of travel north slash south, intersection Warner Street, location Prospect Street, direction of travel north slash south, intersection Crescent Street slash Summer Street, location Riverside Drive, direction of travel east slash west, intersection Federal Street, location Summer Street, direction of travel west, intersection Prospect Street slash Crescent Street, Location, Warner Street, direction of travel, east slash west, intersection, <laughs> Kinkley Street. They have a motion for a positive recommendation for this ordinance, please. Motion for a positive recommendation. Second. Second. Beth, Adam was that second. Thank you. Okay, so by way of discussion, as I mentioned, Fuss and O'Neill has studied multiple intersections for us, and um, let's take them one at a time here, um, though I would like to vote on them as a package. So Hinkley Street at Warner Street. So Warner Street at Hinkley, and um, Maggie, I'll ask if you wouldn't mind uh, shifting to street view while I'm talking here so folks can see the intersection we're talking about. Um, it is Warner at Hinkley is currently a two-way stop controlled intersections with a stop control on Hinkley Street. Hinkley travels northbound and southbound and Warner travels in the westbound and eastbound direction. Um, based on Fuss and O'Neill's assessments of this intersection, their visibility is limited and it's recommended that um, Warner Street at Hinkley Street be converted into an always stop controlled intersection. Um, so that is the recommendation from our engineering consultants. I see that we have uh, folks for public comment. So again, if you could um, just give us your uh, name and city or town or residence, and we will unmute you. Go right ahead. Joyce. Joyce, you should have a pop-up box on your computer that allows you to unmute yourself. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, right I'm ahead. having trouble. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, uh, I particularly want to talk about Warner at Federal, but I also am in favor of this uh, proposal for Warner and Hinkley because of the new construction. Thank you, Joyce. Would you mind um, just telling us your last name and your- uh, Joyce name? Rosenfeld and 15 Warner Street. Okay, thank you. And and go ahead, uh, do you have a comment for us? I just did, made my comment. I, okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure there's nothing you Thank you. Add. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jackie, you're up next. Thank you. Um, I live downhill from this intersection and I go through it every time I go from my house to have do any business in Florence Center. Um, there was a traffic study done a couple last summer, a couple summers ago, and and so they, it, it didn't give any evidence of speeding, but you know, people who live on the uphill side of this intersection have been doing their own traffic calming. And I thought the issue was dead. And now I see it's a four-way stop coming up and I'm so happy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for your comments, Jackie. Next up, I just see KA written on the screen. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I uh, my name is Kathleen Alves and um, Phyllis, Phyllis King, and we own the house on the corner um, of Warner and Hinckley. And we did send um, a letter, kind of outlining comment as to our concerns about 
putting a stop sign there. Um, now I hear that there's a study, but I'm not sure what uh, is the criteria to put a four way um, there. And as we outlined in our um, comments letter um, that we sent this morning, it I'm having a hard time understanding how that would be a positive um, impact there on that corner since we spend a fair amount of time in the front yard gardening and um, it it, no it, do, it doesn't seem like this is a, an, an issue. And as we outlined, if you put a stop sign there, we have a the uh, sign for the street, we have the crosswalk sign, um, which definitely um, slows people down. And if we put a stop sign there, um, I'm not sure where you're gonna put it, um, but it also then would impact, there's, we have a small frontage there, um, parking in the front of our house when we park in the front or when people come or we have things to unload or, or whatever. So um, we don't really support having a four-way there based on our observations over the past year and a half of living there. We have about 30 feet there in front of our house from about where the existing sign is. And I understand that we would not be able to park in front of our house if you, in fact, put a... a sign if you put a stop sign there i understand that people want people to slow down but it seems to me that if you put a stop sign there the only people that it really impacts negatively is going to be us living in that house it also seems to me that in the neighborhood many people or many streets have um those humps the speed bumps so those slow people down so that impacts the everyone on the street equally everyone has to slow down so i don't understand why you would, if you, if the goal is to have people slow down, that you wouldn't put speed bumps there rather than uh, put, I think a stop sign is the cheapest way to do it, but I don't, it, and it will slow people down in front of the two, the right in front of the corner, but I doubt that they will slow down elsewhere in the, on the ends of the block. Um, as most people seem to drive quickly and then slow down for the stop sign and that's it. So um, my concern is it's going to negatively impact us in our ability to stop in front of our house and unload groceries or have friends over or do anything else because we will be parking in the in the place where there's a, a stop sign. Okay, thank you for your comments. And we will, as part of this process, we we will respond to to those comments as, as we discuss this. Um, I just want to make sure no one else has any comments for us, Jackie. I see your hand up again, so um, we can. Um, Diane, are you um, raising your hand or? We yes. I can't tell. Yeah, I don't know how to put. I don't know how to put the digital yeah. thing up there. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I really understand the concerns of Kathy and Phyllis, and I, I totally get that. My concern is um, since the road, since Hinkley Street was redone and the yellow lines were put in, people go really fast. And even though most people stop at the stop sign, especially people that live in the neighborhood, um, people that are just using it as a cut through, a lot of them just do a quick roll through. <laughs> And I worry about people coming down the hill from the upside of Warner, um, especially. And then I know people coming back past Kathy and Phyllis's house don't really have the visibility to see something coming. So I, I'm, I guess I was, I definitely am for the slowing somehow. <laughs> and if it if it has to be a stop sign, I would still choose that. But I also like Phyllis and Kathy's idea. If we had speed bumps, that would be ideal. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank, Thank you, me. Diane. Can you just tell me your um, town oh. of residence, please? Yeah, Florence, 73 Hinkley Street. Okay. Thank you. Um, Beth, can you please have the record reflect that Diana Day has joined us? Okay, Jackie, I'll unmute you. Go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to point out that this picture is out of date. Um, this house on the corner, Phyllis and Kathleen's house, they're very lovely women and they're good neighbors, but they have put, a, I, you have to know, they have put a fence up 
along the sidewalk on Hinkley and along the property line on Warner Street. And that does impair some visibility. And this house was built with a zero lot line, reduced lot line features that puts it much closer to the corner than a house built with standard setbacks would be. And that I think that's part of the problem. But the fact that it's a hill, people get going fast coming down, coming down Warner. That's, I just wanted to mention the fence too. Yep, thank you. Okay, next is um, Mike Sora. Will I mute you? You should have something say asking you to unmute yourself. There. Does that do it? Yep, yep it does. Go ahead. We can hear you. Hey, Mike Soroff, I live on Hinkley Street um, on, on the block that we were uh, um, on the next block past Winslow and, and, and Hinkley. I, so I drive on Hinkley a lot. Uh, I never understood why there was a stop sign uh, there rather than uh, on on uh, on Warner, since I thought uh, Hinkley has has has, has more traffic. Um, uh, I, in general, I think stop signs aren't so aren't aren't the most um, the, the, aren't the best way to 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 quiet to to quiet traffic. So um, if if there is any change, I would support. Uh, a four-way stop there, uh, but um, 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 but uh, if 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 quieting traffic on Hinkley is the is is the goal, then then maybe some other some other method ought to be ought to be considered. Thank you for your oh, comment. And one other thing, I I would support adding a, a making making a Riverside and 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 Federal uh, a four way stop. Thank you, Mike. Okay, so I think at this point it would be helpful, um, Chief. Would you mind talking a little bit about the speed data that was collected um, on both um, Hinkley and Warner? Um, prior to this engineering review by Fuss and O'Neill? Sure. Um, first, Warner Street uh, speed data was collected June 19th through the 27th of 2022. 1,297 vehicles were analyzed. The average speed was 19.8 miles per hour. Um, there was no collisions during that period. Uh, Warner Street or Hinkley Street uh, speed data was first collected um, 7 2 through 7 10 of 2021. In total, 2,974 vehicles were analyzed. The 85th percentile for speed was 31.6 miles per hour. Um, there was no significant issues identified at that time. Also, speed data was collected from 627 through 73 of 2022. 2,145 vehicles were analyzed. The 85th percentile was 29.1 miles per hour, and there was no significant speed issue identified at that time. Thanks, Chief. You're so welcome. I think I, I think that uh, the reason I, I wanted to get that information out there is it, there were traffic calming requests that were submitted for both Warner and Pinkley separate separately, um, both of which were discussed at this commission and both of which have been closed um, because speed has not been identified as a, a uh, consideration in the area. I mean, we have neighborhoods where we have folks going, you know, 40 miles an hour in a posted 25 or in a posted 30. Um, that's just not a phenomenon that we are seeing in this neighborhood. So the installation of speed humps um, is typically something we do in neighborhoods where we have 
high rates of speed or on roadways where we have high rates of speed and we're trying to get people to slow down by five to seven miles an hour um, because they are just um, you know, consistently exceeding the speed limit. And that's not the case in this area. What is the case is that we have a four-way intersection that has the potential for conflict points due to sight lines. And that is the reason that this intersection was turned over to our consulting engineers to look at, you know, there is a potential for conflict here. And so what do we do around that? We don't use stop signs as traffic calming devices. We use speed humps as traffic calming devices, or we rebuild the road to be more narrow, or we stripe the road to be narrow, or we make parking restrictions that sort of box cars on one side or the other so that folks have to zigzag. And, and then they have to slow down because they can't drive in a straight line. That's how we calm traffic. We don't like put up a stop sign to calm traffic. That's not considered technically a traffic calming device. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in this case, this is purely a, uh, a safety installation that is about preventing conflict between moving vehicles at an intersection where the sight lines are poor. So Kathleen, to address some of your concerns when we think about how we would do signage in a location like this, um, we would take the existing uh, pedestrian signs that are there and those would be replaced with stop signs. So there's not an installation of additional signage in, in the city's right of way. And that sign, excuse me, I'm fighting a little bit of a cold here. So pardon my voice. Um, that sign just sort of gets turned over um, into a, a stop sign. So you're not going to have like multiple signs in the intersection. We don't want to have that level of uh, visual clutter and confusing drivers about what they're supposed to do. Um, regarding parking in front of your house, there are currently parking restrictions that are in place within um within the bounds of an intersection. And I know that Nancy's here with us. Um, Nancy, if you wouldn't mind, could you just talk a little bit about what the current restrictions are for parking um, within the bounds of an intersection? Certainly. Um, currently, the distance ordinances would be no parking within 20 feet of an intersection and no parking within three feet of a driveway. So those are already standing ordinances. Yeah, thanks, Nancy. So those those parking restrictions um, already exist. Um, it, it's um, you know obviously not um, going to be good to park you know on the start bar of the stop sign, um, and and that's um, definitely an adjustment that's going to have to be made. But I want to make sure that I'm addressing. Um, all of your comments and answering the questions that have been raised um, so that everyone fully understands the justification for this. This is about sight lines at a four-way intersection where there is potential conflict each time two cars meet. Um, I just want to, before I go back to public comments, I want to ask if anyone on the commission has any comments or questions around this. <laughs> Excuse me while I'm uh, coughing too. Okay, um, Kathleen, we'll unmute you, and you're um, you're welcome to speak again. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to address. We did build a fence on the Hinkley side of our house, but we did follow all the rules and regulations in terms of visibility. And it's a lower fence in the front. And I think it was, I can't remember exactly, it was 20 feet back or something from the intersection before it could be higher. So we followed the city ordinances so that you did have visibility of that intersection. Yep. Thank you for the clarification. And, it, you know, what you're suggesting is not uncommon. Folks uh, often have you know, different types of shrubs or hedges or trees or whatever um, that are not necessarily non-compliant, but which do impact sight lines. Some people have very low slung cars. Some people are driving in pickup trucks and are less impacted. Um, we have to look at all intersections 
sort of for the worst case scenario. So if everyone's in a in a very low riding vehicle, are they able to see or not? And not again, not uncommon with all of the intersections that we're talking about this afternoon is some level of vegetation um, or a utility pole, you know, that's blocking the roadway um, that, you know, again, isn't something we go out and cut down, but is something that we have to think about when we're making these recommendations. Um, any other, any further comments? I, I think I see an actual hand um, waving lcataret8 at aol.com. Let me unmute you. You should have a, a thing. Oh, there you go. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. If you could just let us know your name, that'd be great. Yeah, this is Elaine Kirsten. I live at 73 Warner Street. <clears throat> and just in relation to some of the concerns that we're talking about, that uh, the visual field that you're talking about, the line of sight, um, where I, I'm personally very aware of that is going oh. from Warner up the hill. Uh, there's a lot of children on our street, which is great. Uh, they're extremely active, which is also wonderful. They're in the street a lot with skateboards and, and all kinds of bicycles and roller skating and running up and down. I have a front porch and I have seen the most, some of the most frightening, frightening things uh, uh, at that intersection with the kids. And I know, and I do see that they try. I mean, they kind of look both ways, but they're on their skateboard and they're going down. So I, I'm very much in support of a, of a four-way stop there for that reason. And, and it's what's going on up the hill there and, and to try to get people to slow down as they get to that intersection. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Okay, is there any further comment on this intersection? Uh, for members of the commission, members of the public. Thanks, all done, first time. Okay. Copy that. Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll move on to the next part of this ordinance, which is Prospect Street at Crescent Street and Summer Street. Um, so Maggie, I think that would be helpful if you could um, show us that intersection on Street View. Um, so Crescent Street and Summer Street at Prospect is a two-way stop controlled intersection with a stop control on Prospect Street only right now. Prospect Street travels in the northbound and southbound direction. Crescent Street is the west leg of the intersection and Summer Street is the east leg of the intersection. Um, there were four crashes reported between January 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2022 at this intersection. Um, so visibility here is restricted by a home, vegetation, utility pole, and on-street parking. It is recommended that Prospect Street at Crescent and Summer become an all-way stop-controlled intersection because of intersection plate distance constraints. Um, so does anyone, uh, is anyone here from the public who wishes to speak to us about this intersection or any members of the commission with any comments about this area for us? Councillor Jarek, go ahead. Thank you. Um, my concern would be folks coming up Summer Street. Uh, it can, it's fairly steep uh, there and in icy conditions, um, I could see someone, if they stop, not being able to continue. Um, so would this area be on the priority list for, or increase in the priority in terms of um, salting and sanding? And, and would we anticipate that folks would uh, maybe choose to go a different way in, in conditions like that? It, yes, and that's a good question. So we went through this when we looked at pine and maple um, because that that intersection too sort of sits at the top of a hill and and there was definitely some concern that um, you know folks might stop or sort of get backed up on that um, uh, Maple Street hill and not be able to start. Um, what we have for nights like tonight is a priority list of routes um, where we pre-treat, we call them hill routes. Um, and then there, it, there are places that we pay particular attention to and, and we salt, you know, regularly throughout the storm and in advance of the storm. 
So this area would be kind of incorporated into one of those um, routes where we're paying a little bit closer attention because now we have an all-way stop control here. Um, so that's something that would get folded into our snow and ice operation. But as you're describing, you know, it's the same concern that we had um, for Maple Street and, and Pine when that was converted. Um, so not, a, not an insignificant concern, um, but um, one that we feel is, you know, kind of worth the risk uh, year round, if you will, um, versus, you know, a few days like today. Right. Right. Thank you. Any other comments on this intersection? Any members of the public who have any comments on this intersection? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so next is um, Riverside Drive at Federal Street. So Riverside Drive at Federal Street is a two-way stop controlled intersection with stop control on Federal Street only. Federal Street travels in the northbound and southbound direction, and Riverside Drive travels in the westbound and eastbound directions. For crashes, there was one crash here between January 1st, 2020 and December 31st, 2022. Visibility is restricted by vegetation. It is recommended that Riverside Drive at Federal be converted to an always stop controlled intersection um, based on volumes and sightline uh, constraints. So. Um, the volume warrant is not one that we've talked about for the last two um, uh, stop signs, but here uh, there are enough uh, vehicles um, that volume warrants are met without the sight line constraint. So um, that is the recommendation from our engineering firm on this. So Joyce, I see your hand up and go right ahead. You should have a unmute box on your computer screen there. Yep. There I go. Hey, um, go ahead, Joyce. It's uh, fascinating to hear the process uh, of this department, uh, and I appreciate um, the information that you give us. Um, I'm particularly concerned with this intersection. Um, the sight lines are bad, not only with the vet. I come up Warner and make a left usually on Riverside and the vegetation on that corner is so bad. But also the, the person on the corner, there are cars parked in front of that house and that also causes a visibility problem. Um, also, I find that the speed bump kind of accelerates uh, my, uh, the time of people coming down that hill. Um, I find I myself, when I come from the cutlery building down, um, can almost sail through the Warner Street intersection, and I have to uh, be very careful, even though I know this is coming. Um, so I'm grateful that there will be a four-way sign there. Thank you for your comments, Joyce. Next is Jackie. Hi. Jackie. Hi. Thank you. Jackie Balance from Warner Street in Florence. And I just wanted to say that this in intersection intimidates me so much. I feel so unsafe making left turns on Riverside Drive that I go out of my way uh, to avoid this in intersection. It's just, I had an uncle who would ma always make three rights rather than a left because I think it runs in the family, fear of left turns. But anyway, this one's a bad one. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. Okay, and I will add that um, this will be a uh, major traffic flow change. Um, for this area. Um, and it's something that we will have to carefully implement, probably looking at um, electronic sign boards um, in the area just to alert drivers to a new traffic pattern, as well as you know, new traffic pattern ahead signs and plenty of advanced um, signage. All of these changes you know, will need to be communicated to drivers because I think people are sort of used to 
um, the way the intersections are now. So we do have to do a, a careful implementation on this. Um, Carolyn, go ahead. Um, uh, I just want, was wondering if maybe you could um, speak a little bit to the um, sight lines related to the vegetation and whether the vegetation um, is encroaching within the required clearance area that property owners need to maintain, um, or if it's just additional larger vegetation that isn't the responsibility of the property owners in those areas to maintain. Um, and if they're, it, um, if, if it is the former, you know, is there a way that um, information can get out to those property owners that they should be pruning back their vegetation to comply with the ordinance? Yeah, thank you for the question. The um, uh, vegetation management is one of the most vexing challenges. <clears throat> Excuse me, for my department, um, we fight this all over the city. Every ward, um, I don't want to say every street, but sometimes it feels like it, particularly after the summer we had. Um, it is incredibly difficult for us to enforce the ordinance as it is written. Um, what we do is we issue letters to property owners. We say, you know, the vegetation is encroaching into the public right of way. It is creating a sight line hazard. You know, please cut it or we are going to cut it for you and bill you. Um, the difficulty with that, of course, is uh, resources to actually go out and do the cutting um, and then collecting that money. We actually um, the city does not have a way to collect that money except by um, going to court um, to do it. And that's not uh, an avenue that um, that the city chooses to go down. Um, so we have to appeal to the good graces of residents. Um, we also try to engage the ward counselor and ask them to do some level of outreach. Um, but it is an incredibly vexing challenge for DPW, for the building department, compliance with that ordinance is nearly impossible. So when we look at these intersections and when we look at sight line issues related to vegetation, some of the vegetation is compliant, some of the vegetation is non-compliant, but the issue with vegetation is that it recurs. It's not a, um, a one-time problem. Um, so in this particular case, it's not like, oh, we can do a little pruning and you know make this place safer. Um, it's, it's, we've got volume problems as well. Um, so in this particular case, you know, thanks for listening to my, um, you know, this is a vexing problem, but um, in this particular case, you know, a, a stop sign is, is warranted here based on volume, um, if not sight line. Thanks. I mean, I, I know it's a, an enforcement issue or problem for the city, for sure. And it's more, I think it might be instructive for people to understand that, you um, you know, th this wasn't the only one. I'm, I know this is a volume issue, but there are many places, as you said, all over the city that create where people are probably unaware that their own landscaping and planting so are creating this. So maybe there's a a recurring path that city councilors can help out with in, um, you know, especially when I when intersections are identified through these studies, um, noting that vegetation is a problem that that could be sort of the jumping off point for as examples for people to understand that um, taking care of their own landscaping um, is a safety issue as well as, um, it, you know, that's important for the rest of the city. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, you know, it also impedes access to sidewalks, um, which creates you know, problems for um, folks, um, you know, who are on the sidewalks and it's, it's a really difficult problem for motorists, pedestrians, and bicyclists, you know, for all of us in so many locations. What I will say is that, you know, we never want to put up a sign as sort of a lazy way out. Um, so if there is a way to address a vegetation issue and sort of eliminate a sight line problem, um, we will take that um, instead of saying, well, let's just put up a sign because like this, this hedge is never going to get trimmed, um, you know, because uh, again, that's sort of a permanent, you know, a sign is forever, um, you know, and if there's an easier solution, we like to take it. 
Councillor Jarrett, go ahead. Yeah, I um, just putting myself out there in, in terms of Ward 5, I'm happy to reach out to constituents if you do, if, if there is a problem um, with particular property. So don't hesitate to engage me and I'll work to engage my constituents. Thanks, Councillor. And I know we've we've definitely gone back and forth on a variety of um, these issues over the years. Okay, any other comments for us on um, on Riverside Drive at Federal? So we have a motion on the floor for a positive recommendation um, relative to multi-way stop signs at these three locations um, for a positive recommendation. Um, is there any further discussion on this before I ask for a roll call? Okay, seeing and hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Donna? Yes. John? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Alex? Yes. Deb? Yes. Adam? Yes. Adam? Oh, sorry. Yes, I was muted. Sorry. Um, Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. And Jamie? Yes. That's 10 yeses, unanimous, it passes. Each time we have a new person. Uh, thank you, Beth. And just for um, the members of the public um, it, who are here, um, this commission makes a positive recommendation to city council. This ordinance um, will now move to city council where it goes through the process. I believe it gets uh, referred to a uh, committee of the council for further deliberation um, before going back to the council for a vote. So this is actually um, for those members of the public um, in attendance. This is the first stop um, for these proposed ordinances, but certainly not the last. Okay, next up is a proposed ordinance relative to parking on West Street. I will read the ordinance. An ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts be ordained by the city council of the city of Northampton and city council assembled as follows. Section one, section 312-102, the code of ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-102, schedule one, prohibited at all times, location, pull-away zone, west street, side, westerly from Arnold Avenue to a point 85 feet southerly from Arnold Avenue. Section two, that section 312-109 of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-109, Schedule 8, on street parking meter zones, location west street side west from point 85 feet southerly of Arnold Avenue to a point 164 feet southerly of Arnold Avenue. Time limit class 10 hours slash class 3C and class 4C. So, um, before I ask for a positive recommendation on this, let me just uh, explain what this is. Um, this ordinance proposes to amend an existing prohibited parking zone on West Street. From Arnold Avenue to a point 85 feet southerly from Arnold Avenue, this will increase visibility of pedestrians using the crosswalk on West Street and Arnold Avenue per the attachment, which you can see that Maggie has up. Can I have a motion for a positive recommendation on this, please? Move positive recommendation. Second. Thank you. And for further explanation, um, according to the Smith College traffic study, uh, Smith College did oh, fund right. the traffic study of this entire corridor. Um, and Preston O'Neill conducted that traffic study. At Arnold Avenue, 57 pedestrians were recorded crossing West Street during the morning peak hour, and 75 pedestrians crossed during the afternoon peak hour. So the intersection of West Street and Arnold Avenue experienced three collisions during the three-year study period. Two of the three collisions occurred with pedestrians. One was a single vehicle collision. Single vehicle collision resulted in property damage only. Both collisions with pedestrians resulted in injury to the pedestrian. 
Um, so the idea behind this ordinance is to really open up the sight lines at this crosswalk. This is, uh, I, I would say, heavily supported um, by officials at Smith College. Um, and we concur that uh, it is a uh, good choice. So um, are there any comments from anyone on this proposed ordinance? Questions from counselors? Councilor Jarrett, go ahead. Uh, the better sight lines are great. Um, and I, but I don't imagine they will slow traffic. They'll just allow folks to see that there are people in the crosswalk, which I'm sure is an improvement. Are there other short-term improvements that we could take while waiting for the more complete study and, and uh, construction? I, there are, or there were, but I had to remove them. So I, I'm not sure if you saw it, but I had actually taken the lanes here and narrowed them using those in-road pedestrian markers. Um, and we'd actually, um, we'd set up some cones um, at this intersection to try to tighten up that turning radius. Um, it's just very difficult with our snow operations to leave any of those things out um, in the middle of the street. We do have um, Fuss and O'Neill sort of feverishly working um, to design improvements to those to this intersection that we're going to bid out um, in, in the spring. Um, so we'd like to see a, a, a pedestrian um, RRFBs here, so the rapid um, rectangular flashing beacons. Um, so the, the signs will activate and flash to warn drivers of pedestrians um, in the intersection. Um, we're also looking at the feasibility of speed humps in the area um, and enhancements to all of the other um, crosswalks in this entire corridor. Um, so in the interim, it's just really hard for us to do anything else while it's you know snowing a couple of times a week. Um, but what I will do is when it stops snowing, those pedestrian uh, in-road markers will immediately go back out um, and, and that'll sort of shrink everything down again. Great, thank you. Devin, go ahead. Um, I'm glad you have traffic engineers looking at this, at this section of road. Um, what you mentioned was westbound. So that's coming from town headed out onto um, the faster Route 66. Um, I, I'm concerned that improving sight lines will actually raise the speed of the traffic, but I'm more concerned with the inbound traffic than I am the outbound traffic, just because people are used to going faster as they come in from 66. Yeah, thanks, Devin. And that's one of the things that we have Fuss and O'Neill looking at. And, you know, we what we want to communicate to drivers coming into this entire corridor is that they are entering sort of a combined city street slash college campus. So we need to kind of build things in the road that make it very clear that, A, there's a lot of pedestrians, and B, because of that, uh, you should be slowing down. And if they don't do that willingly, we have to think of ways um, to actually force the issue. Um, so that's what Fuss and O'Neill is gonna be working on over the winter. <coughs> Excuse me. Any other comments on this proposed ordinance? As I mentioned, Smith is um, paying very close attention to this and, and uh, cheering, um, cheering for this. So they uh, wholeheartedly um, support this ordinance. Okay, seeing uh, no further comments on this, Beth, if you could, there's a motion for a positive recommendation on the floor. Beth, if you could please call the roll. Donna? Yes. John? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Alex? Yes. Deb? Yes. Adam? Yes. Debin? Yes. Diana? Yes. And Jamie? Yes. It's unanimously passed with 10 yeses. Thanks, Beth. Next up is update from the commission chair and vice chair about previously submitted traffic calming requests. Uh, we did have a traffic calming request for Prospect Street at Crescent Street and Summer Street. Um, we did talk about uh, this um, at the August 
2023 TPC meeting. Um, so it, it, at the um, at the end of the day, our recommendation, as we discussed in a previous agenda item, is to implement an all-way stop control at this intersection. So one of the things we look at, or all of the things we look at when we get a traffic coming um, application is we have to look at, is there speeding? Are there accident problems at this intersection? Um, what sort of traffic volumes do we have and what improvements can we make here? And sometimes um, there isn't a speeding issue. Sometimes we don't uh, need to worry about collision data. Um, sometimes it's just as simple as uh, signage or, you know, restriping the roadway. In this case, we feel that a good enhancement to this intersection will be a four-way stop control and appropriate advanced signage. Um, and we believe that it's appropriate to close this traffic calming application at this time. So um, the uh, response form is, uh, was linked to the agenda. I don't know if anyone has any comments or questions on that for us. Okay, and for the new counselors um, uh, on the TPC, um, we have uh, initiated, our, we have neighborhoods or residents who initiate these traffic calming requests. We keep them in queue. We uh, move them forward at a TPC meeting where we, dis again, discuss speed and collision data. Uh, we give the neighborhood an opportunity to speak to their experience. We deliberate on it as a commission. Um, and then we engage in uh, engineering and safety review. And then when, um, when we are ready to move a recommendation forward or to close it, um, we place it onto an agenda and we generate a response form. We notify the area city councilor um, and the residents or, or resident who, who made the request um, and give them an opportunity to come hear what, what the improvement is. So that's just kind of our process for, for the counselors who, who are new to the commission. Okay, does anybody have any new business? Okay, hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, it's a second from John. Okay, any discussion? Okay, Beth, please call the roll. Donna? Yes. John? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Alex? Yes. Deb? Yes. Adam? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. And Jamie? Yes. Unanimous with 10 again.